Okay. Today we will uh, discuss measures uh, 3.6.3 uh, paper sericulture subunit sericulture. So, uh, going to the details about the sericulture the subunit. So, we have to know what is sericulture. I think you know about the basically what is sericulture. Sericulture if we see briefly the sericulture or silk farming is the commercial rearing of sericigenous insect for uh, producing of silk. So, uh, sericigenous insect means silk producing insect. So, sericulture is also known as agro based and labor intensive industry rank second to China, India rank second to China contributing 15.5 of world production provides direct employment to about 35 millions of people. Okay. So, uh, sericulture basically two different uh, part one is can say this malbari, malbari and another is non malbari. Okay non malbari. So, if we see the varieties of silk, so the world four different varieties of silk malbari, then muga we have, then tosor, tosor also we have two different types temperate tosor, temperate tosor and tropical tosor, tropical tosor and number four we have eri, eri silk. So, these are the four different uh, varieties of silk, four different varieties of silk, malvari, the, the insect bombex mori producing the malvari silk. Similarly, Antheria assamensis, Antheria assamensis helper, so produces muga silk and also known as Antheria assamensis, proposed the name by Westwood and temperate tosser temperate tosser silkworm Antheria proeli and tropical tosser in India it is found Antheria mylita then in Japan Antheria yamaima and China Antheria parini. So, again we have the another silk variety is Eri silk. So, Eri silk the uh, name of the insect is Samia ricini donovan. So, this, of, this four varieties of silk apart from the malbari another three varieties together known as non malbari silk. So, uh, if we see the production scenario global product silk production 1,052,868 ton and China alone produces 82.42 percent and India 15.5 percent. If we see the uh, Indian silk production in 2015 and 16, Malbari 20,434 metric ton, uh, so 71.8 percent. Then Tosser, we uh, produced that uh, the period 2,818 metric ton, Eri 5,054 metric ton, and Muga. 166 metric ton. And if we see the 2013 and 14 silk production in case of Assam, Malbari 23.4 metric ton, Eri 2012.70 uh, 2, metric ton and Muga 118.04 metric ton. So, we can say the sericulture a, is a multidisciplinary subject. If we see the scenario or if we see here this uh, trigram, the sericulture we have zoology subject because uh, if we study the animal insect then it is uh, included under zoology. Similarly, because sericulture is host plant, so, uh, so botany is there then they are biochemical analysis in case of insect then food plants. So, we, we go for the biochemistry part then biotechnology also involved similarly genetics and microbiology disease related all study under microbiology. So, uh, if we see the multipurpose uses of silk then host plant apart from the 
that food plant value we can use another purposes like, like uh, from host plant fruit, root, bark, fuel wood also we can use as a food plant uh, from food plant also apart from that that uh, food plant uh, we can use like this so pupa also we can use as a pupal oil pupa cake then silkworm litter also we can use uh, biogas or vermicomposting so if we see the biodiversity uh, we know the variety and variability of life forms is popularly known as uh, biodiversity then uh, in case of seribiodiversity so seribiodiversity refers to the variability in sericigenous insect and their host plants which are economically and ecologically important and by and large forest based so wild silk moth or non mulberry silk moths also known as boyna silk are in general not reared in captivity so these are charismatic fauna so beautiful fauna of the uh, insect world producing porous silk and exhibit variability of life variability of uh, life from eggs to adult with characteristically different physiological morphological and feeding parameters among themselves so if we see the biodiversity scenario of the world wild silk moth varieties so present status is like this so about 1861 species in 162 genera and nine subfamilies in asia and africa subcontinent we have 80 species so indian subcontinent from himalayas to sri lanka we have 50 species and india alone we have 47 species of wild silk moth under 15 genera and uh, this is uh, actually one report uh, from uh, myself also the in 2019 report from nagaland 15 species belonging to eight genera and in northeastern regions again we have studied so 27 species under 13 genera so uh, that's all about the brief uh, uh, wild silk moth biodiversity of world so we can say that the india or northeast india uh, about the four varieties if we see the four varieties of silk malbari then muga tosor and eri we have beauties there in northeastern region we have four varieties of silk so if uh, details about the silk moth species found in northeastern region of india we have anthera assamensis then anthera royale anthera proeli anthera prithi anthera species nobu then ataka atlas ectia silini uh, ataka atlas we uh, we all know that the world largest insect atlas moth then ectia silini indian moon moth cricula trifenesteta samia ricini then samia keningi santhonexia minas triophila religiosa drendomylas gracia Lopa Katinka, Ectia Rhodopneuma, Bombyx mandarina, Archaeotaca Edwardsi, Anthera parini, uh, then Anthera halferi, Anthera comta, Lebeda nobilis, Rhodonia neura, Bombyx hotoni, Anthera mylita, Anthera neviti, Anthera castania and Lopa sikima. These are the 27 species of wild silk moth uh, from uh, reported from northeastern region of India. so uh, these are the wild silk moth uh, species i am uh, giving the brief idea about the wild silk moth species in northeastern region because uh, it is related to your uh, according to your syllabus because we have to know the sericulture so we have to know the bio resources seri bio resources in northeastern india and uh, in india also so these are the uh, different varieties of uh, silk moth found in northeastern region of india then the, these are the adult uh, moth and then uh, larval stage then cocoon stage so uh, these are again this uh, i am giving this because you have uh, uh, i think you have uh, interest in different uh, field in uh, sericulture also so few sir you have to go how you can go so that's why i am giving this slide because this uh, particular species this uh, uh, four species or C. Anthera samensis wild, Anthera samensis cultivated, Santhonexia minas, Atacasa. These are the varieties is available in our Nogam also. 
So, these are again so anthria mylita abundantly available in different location of Nogao district also Krikula trifenestata, those semia kenengi, so semia resini, these all varieties are available in, in the Nogao. So, uh, uh, because we have in according to your syllabus, we have to know the four varieties of uh, silk in uh, and their economics and their products. So, before going to this, we have to know the their life cycle, their host plants. So, uh, if we if we the briefly know about their life cycle or food plants, one by one, if we go for the in case of Malbari, Malbari, we have only food plant that is uh, Moras Elba and Moras, there is Moras also different species are there, uh, Moras Indica, Moras Elba. So, uh, this is the purely Malbari, then we have Muga. So, Muga so far we have reported, if we see the record, then uh, reported so far 10 different food plants. So, along with this, uh, food plants also uh, divided in dif uh, differently like so primary food plants. Primary food plants. Primary food plants we have Sum and Sualu. Sualu. So, Sum is popularly known as Parsia bombicina and Sualu Parsia uh, monupetella or so, uh, okay. So, secondary food plants we have uh, Lithia salicifolia or tertiary food plants we have Lithia cubeba. So, Lithia cubeba popularly known as uh, popularly known as mezangkori food plant. So, accordingly we have uh, in case of eri, eri also we have uh, different food plants so far reported, eri also 10 different food plants are reported in northeastern region of India. So, eri we can see the primary food plants. So, basically primary food plants castor. So, castor scientific uh, we have ricinus communis. So, ricinus, ricinus communis. Ricinus communis, so Ricinus communis castor food plants. So, apart from this, uh, another secondary food plants are there. So, uh, Heteropenex fragrance and uh, Payam also, this is popularly known as Casero Heteropenex fragrance and number 3 Payam we have. So, uh, Mani Hot Utilisema also we have the tri Trapioca. So, these are the food plants of uh, Eri Silkworm. Again, we have that the temperate tosser silkum, also known as oak tosser, and Antheria mylita tropical tosser, abundantly uh, reared in Maharashtra and different part of uh, India. So, food plants is Arjun, Terminalia Arjuna, Asan also another food plants. So, these are the briefly about the food plants of. Uh, so, I am giving the brief idea about because we have to go over details about the well, we are discussing about the food plants of a silkworm uh, species wise. Okay? So, I am giving the briefly about the food plants. So, I, I already mentioned that uh, the agriculture, uh, sericulture is agro based industry. So, uh, cultivation of food plants purely agriculture based and the uh, the end product, end product, what is a silk? Silk is purely industrial. So, industrial origin, the production of silk and uh, the weaving materials, industrial beds. So, so another important is uh, there, the uh, life cycle. Life cycle of in case of Antheria assamensis, if we see the Muga silkum, if we see the different stages right from the eggs, uh, the first instar larva, so, basically like other butterflies, uh, in case of Muga silkworm life cycle also uh, divided into three different, uh, four different stages, sorry, like eggs, larva, pupa and adults. So, eggs we have, then larva, larval also, five larval stages are there, uh, four molt and five larval stages are there. Then we have another uh, cocoon. Uh, inside the cocoon pupa is there and then adult. So, whole life cycle is the beauty is there in each and each step of the life cycle, there are uh, varieties, uh, uh, diversity is there. So, first instar in morphological 
and uh, accordingly second instal larva also morphological differences are there. So, each and every life uh, each and every stages of the life cycle. So, uh, diversity is there. So, accordingly if we see the commercial varieties of silk I have already mentioned the mulberry is a purely domesticate it is a most superior quality of silk most of the commercial silk produced in the world comes from this variety and often silk refers to mulberry silk uh, produced by Bombex Murray. These silkworms are completely domesticated and reared indoors and feed uh, feed only the leaves of mulberry plant. Okay. So, again we have another varieties of commercial silk muga silk. I have already men mentioned that produced by the anthria samensis helper polyphagous insect and its wild counterpart is found in foothills of Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh and Nagaland which shows wide range of wide range of color morphism and volatilism. So far reported food plants 15. I have earlier mentioned that uh, earlier reporter mentioned 10 food plants. So, so this is the, this is the uh, latest report 15 food plants are there. So, main food plants of Sum, Swallow, Digloti and Mezangkori. So, again we have another important commercial varieties of silk. So, Eri silk produced by Eri silkworm semiari sine donuban. So, Eri silkworm of the genus Semia contain 19 species out of which Semia ricini is domesticated. So, over the world 19 airy silkworm species are there. So, India we have three different species are there. So, and uh, Semia ricini purely uh, Semia ricini cultivated then Semia keningi wild counterpart and Semia falva wild uh, found in Andabad and Nicobar Island. So, so far 10 food plants are reported. So, main food plants are castor, caseru and trapioca. So, these are the uh, even uh, in larva also. So, 6 color strains are there. So, I am showing these are 6 color strains of uh, airy silkworm larva. Then again, so airy silkworm also produce two different varieties of cocoon, white variety and red varieties of cocoon. So, another important commercial varieties of silk is tussar silk. It consists of two types tropical tussar and temperate tussar or oak tussar. So, tussar silk is produced by silkworm anthria mylita which consists of 44 ecoraces available in India and temperate tussar or oak tussar anthria proily feeds mainly on oak, uh, oak leaves oaks plants leaves ok. So, here interesting is there that uh, oak tosor oak tosor or temperate tosor temperate tosor which is reared in northeastern region of India or Jharkhand and other state it is originally a hybrid species. So, we know that Antheria Antheria royally Antheria royally wild tosser silk moth found abundantly in any India. Similarly, Antheria Antheria Parini, Antheria Parini, Tussar silk moth found in China. So, Antheria proily, Antheria proily actually as a hybrid species comes from Antheria royally, which is found in northeastern region of India, and Antheria Parini. A tosser silk moth species found in China. It is a hybrid species and known as Antheria proily, which first time successfully hybrided by Joly, M. S. Joly, M. S. Joly, 1979. So, it is a hybrid species and established species. So, 
this particular species in our northeastern region in Assam also different hill states and especially Manipur they are rearing for produ uh, production of tosor silk. So, that uh, we have the kukon and yarn diversity. So, basically these are the anterior assamensis helper anterior assamensis we know that basically then the primary food plants of anterior assamensis is sum or parsia bombicina. So, I have already mentioned that the tertiary food plants of uh, anterior assamensis is uh, kori. So, Mejankori, uh, the scientific name of the Mejankori is Lichia cubeba. So, feeding on Lichia cubeba, uh, Muga silkworm produces a different varieties of silk. We know that Muga, Muga means uh, in Assam is word Muga. So, it is uh, uh, in English it is brown color. So, brown, golden, golden yellow or golden brown. So, uh, feeding on Mejankori food plants, Lichia cubeba, Anthera assamensis produces different colored silk, uh, muga silk, which is uh, pro admired by uh, and used by royal families of the Ahum kingdom. So, uh, it is colored is a whitish, a creamy white color, and natural dazzling is there. So, and denier, which uh, denier is a unit, denier is a unit to measure or measure the fineness of uh, thread, silk thread, silk thread, denier, denier. So, denier is a unit to measure the fineness of the silk thread. So, the denier also uh, a fineness fine. So, that is why that the feeding on mezankori food plants, Muga silkworm produces a high quality, finer quality silk is known as popularly Mejankori silk and that the, from that Mejankori silk, uh, so nowadays the uh, availability, the scarcity of that Mejankori food plants due to different regions. So, there is no uh, abundantly available Mejankori food plants in Assam. So, that is why that Mejankori silk production also deteriorate and I, I, I should say that this the present state as no Mejankori silk production is going on in Assam. But in our neighboring hilly state that the particular plant abundantly available that Mejankori plant. So, we have lots of scope to uh, produce that Mejankori silks again because it was earlier in the during Ahum kingdom that Mejankori silk was admired that uh, that Mejankori silk only Mejankori silk waven clothes only uh, wear by that uh, Ahum royal families only. So, uh, we have lots of scope to uh, revive or rejuvenate the Mejankori silk. So, again we have that anterior uh, royally jolly that uh, coupons and uh, uh, yarn. So, again we have Actia silini. So, I, I have already mentioned that apart from the we have uh, commercially four varieties of silk only we are commercially exploited other than we, uh, which we have uh, I have mentioned that uh, in uh, northeastern region of India so far 27 species are reported, but uh, only four from the that uh, from 27 numbers we have so far we have able to commercially exploit only four varieties of. But other species also lots of scope to for go for the commercial rearing or commercial production. So, Actia silini, Actia silini also uh, from Actia silini also we can go for the uh, silk thread or silk fiber or we can go for the commercial uh, production also. If we see the yarn uh, like uh, Mugas also uh, that uh, Actia silini also. Uh, produces a uh, uh, golden yellow colored silk. And uh, first time from uh, northeastern region of India, uh, I should say that the uh, first time I am uh, able to uh, that produce the silk from the Actia silini. So, again we have anterior royally, I have already mentioned that anterior royally. So, anterior royally uh, wild tosser silk moth abundantly found in uh, different geographical part of the northeastern region of India. So, uh, but that particular species also so far not commercially exploited, 
but we have lots of scope to exploit for commercial uh, commercially uh, for commercialization we have lots of scope so uh, if we see that, that the anterior royally cocon say the anterior royally uh, cocon double layered cocon so one floss layer is there and uh, inside the floss layering another cocon is there so it is a double layered cocon it is a very peculiar so uh, that's why we have lots of diversity in uh, we, we we definitely we know that the northeastern region of India one of the biodiversity hotspot. But even even sericulture also sericulture also we have uh, that uh, that particular pro prospect that, that uh, in sericulture also lots of diversities are there. So we, uh, that's I'm mentioning here that the uh, anterior royally double layered cocon and anterior royally I'm mentioning again and again because that anterior royally and anterior priony hybrid species from anterior royally and anterior parini a hybrid species is anterior proyly so which is uh, which is commercially reared in um, imphal and other hilly states of assam so again we have another uh, species that uh, atakas atlas so we have no that uh, from atakas atlas also produces phagra silk but uh, in Indian subcontinent and uh, in Assam and Northeastern region that and Ataka Atlas is not reared in commercially, commercially not reared. But in China and Indonesia and that uh, Ataka Atlas also reared for commercialization. Uh, then uh, from Ataka Atlas uh, they, they uh, produces Phagara silk and then from Phagara silk they uh, produces a different type of decoration mattress and other purposes they use that phagra silk. So again we have Samia Kaningi, uh, Samia Kaningi, Samia Kaningi also working on different food plants we have, which we have, I have recorded and interesting is there that, that Samia Kaningi also feeds on a majangkori food plant. So feeding on different food plants they are uh, differences are there. That's why I am mentioning again and again that there are lots of work we have to do. They are in sericulture chemistries, they are biochemistries, they are why? Why? That the color is a difference. So that we have to explore. Why? That the color, the silk color is different, feeding on different food plants. So uh, definitely we have to examine, the, we have to evaluate the, whether the uh, what are the characteristics of what is the behind reason so colors are feeding on different food plants the colors then ultimately production of cocon then quality and quantity of uh, the silk also vary so again we have the different another species that uh, semia ricini so semia ricini semia ricini donu bhanjo uh, only species in the that Airy silkworm because I have already mentioned that uh, under Semia 19 species are there. So nine, from 19 species only species is commercially reared species Semia uh, ricini. And interesting is there that the Semia ricini that the Semia ricini abundantly reared in Assam uh, traditionally from time immemorial Assam and northeastern region of uh, region of Indian people they uh, traditionally reared that uh, airy silkworm for in uh, generally we know that uh, airy silkworm pupa is uh, uh, different tribal people and other different uh, people also uh, feed as a delicious food so uh, take as a delicious food so that semia ricini that apart from this uh, silk, apart from this silk production, though this pupa also, uh, especially that the tribal and other people also take as a delicious food. So, interesting is there that the, uh, I have mentioned that 19 species of uh, that airy silkworm uh, under Semia genus, only that the Semia ricini is commercially reared and interesting is there so 90 percent production of the semia ricini is from northeastern region of india especially assam so another species is theophila religiosa it is also uh, abundantly uh, found in uh, wild condition so another species that the uh, cricula trifenestata from cricula trifenestata also we can go for the uh, 
uh, that uh, extraction of silk and commercialization of silk. Because uh, interesting is uh, there that uh, that semia uh, that the Kirkula trifenestata it is not commercially reared in India and other part of the uh, our country uh, and northeastern region, but it is commercially uh, reared in China and Indonesia for decoration mattress and other purposes. But uh, I am just uh, giving one example here in Assam also uh, while I am uh, visiting that Boku area. So, Boku I we have known that uh, that sericulture in herbs also they are there. Uh, most of the people they go for the, uh, the production of silk and seed also. That I have while I am visiting that Boku I have seen that one farmer he extracted the silk from the uh, Kricula trifenestata. So, if he can that uh, definitely it is uh, another prospect for commercial, uh, commercialization of Kricula silk also. So, I am giving this entire the, the diversity of the uh, silk moth and kukon ex, as well as a prospect of the wild silk moth in northeastern region of India because it is uh, uh, under your syllabus we have to discuss all these sort of things, but I am giving that entire syllabus as uh, that because uh, if we go for if we if you have interested in foreign part then you can go for the further study that's why I am giving the latest uh, information about uh, sericulture and silk diversity in northeastern region of India and uh, especially Assam and northeastern region. So one uh, interesting uh, thing I, I have to mention here that Muga silk of Assam uh, got a geographical indication right in 2007 August. Uh, so, one interesting is there, uh, I have mentioned already that Muga silk. So, Muga silk of Assam uh, got geographical indication right so, uh, in 2007 August. So, it is a pride of Assam. So, if you see the characteristics of uh, different uh, silk varieties in found in Assam and northeastern region of India, uh, we can say world also in the uh, in world expensive silk, we can say that uh, Muga silk. So, uh, if we see the color of the Muga silk golden yellow or creamy white which I have mentioned that uh, Fedon Mejangkuri. So, Muga or Anthuria Assamensis produces one uh, type of silk is uh, which is admired for its color and uh, that uh, uh, the dazzling for uh, specially and the weaving and uh, wear by that royal families of uh, Ahom kingdom that the Majankuri uh, silk or Majankuri fed Muga silk creamy white color. So, if we see the filament length in generally in case of Muga that 316 to 470 meters, then if we see the denier 3.94 to 4.73, then accordingly we have another species which is not commercially exploited that Actia silini also uh, color is golden yellow to creamy white and that filament length is 134 to 143 and denier is 7.72 to 7.94. So, accordingly anterior proily light brown to creamy white then the filament length is uh, 3.352 uh, to 457, then denier 4.33 to 5.03 and three are oily accordingly light brown color then, or to creamy white then uh, that filament length is uh, 2.75 or uh, 275 to 326 uh, and denier 5.00 uh, 5 to 5.05 then accordingly and three assumptions uh, anteria space is no book, creamy white uh, to whitish brown color the, the filament length 328 to 395 and that uh, they are 3.0 to 3.5. So, that uh, characteristic of a spun silk yarn of certain species of wild silk moth found in northeastern region. I am giving example of northeastern region because I just uh, uh, we have lots of uh, in sericultural biodiversity in northeastern region of India. So, I am just giving this examples to, to grow 
the interest of sericulture so further we can go for the uh, higher study or for uh, other that uh, that uh, uh, that entrepreneurship development based on sericulture day so i am giving example more example in northeastern region of india so accordingly if we see the respond silk uh, like uh, ataka satlas so color grayish brown then uh, the digaming lost 15.7 percent so uh, yarn yield uh, 30.4 percent then cricula trifinista the color brownish gray digam digaming lost 46.6 then uh, yarn yield 27.10 uh, per uh, 10 percent then semi arisini again the, the color white is gray to creamy white then the digam lost uh, 23.5 percent then yarn yield 72.86 percent and semi akeningi again we have color so gray to big red color then uh, digam lost 26.5 and yarn yield 58.5 uh, 33%. So, if we see the yarn deal maximum in Samia Rishini. So, if we see the commercial product of the uh, silk, why we need silk? We, why we need silk? Every day we are using silk. I think you know that we are every day we are using silk. So, where and if we ask the where we are using silk, if we uh, see the medical application of the silk every while stitching uh, in medical operational purposes we are using silk. So, uh, silk also used as a biomaterial if we see the commercial apart from these are the dress materials uh, uh, from Muga silk product then the again we have airy silk product and Tosor silk product these are the dress materials and airy silk product. So, uh, silk also used in cosmetic world. So, silk product in the cosmetic world uh, different uh, in China and Japan they are uh, from silk they are using in different cosmetic products. So, uh, again we have uh, made lots of medical application of silk. So, we uh, so, so I, I just uh, uh, want to give example IIT Gohati also uh, they prepare scaffold in biomedical application of silk uh, if we see another important uh, recent research development if we see the silk based artificial human air dam one Assamese scientist so he is uh, Ram, Dr. Rangam Raskwa that uh, they develop artificial air dam from silk from silk fiber. So, Assamese scientists working on air dam perforation project at Deccan University Australia. So, a team of Australian scientists at Deccan University Australia headed by Dr. Rangam Raskwa has been working on an innovative concept to, the, to help those who have hearing loss due to air dam perforation. So, they develop silk based membrane uh, material for an artificial human air dam. So, silk uh, uh, which I have mentioned that the silk also biomedical application. So, these are the different application apart from uh, the, the dress materials uh, because we are traditionally we know that the silk is uh, used mainly that the uh, clothes and other uh, weaving materials, but apart from this uh, silk also different lots of uh, uh, the, the medical application and byproduct utilize uh, if we see the different byproduct also for from silk pupa also apart from the delicacy food so silk pupa also use uh, for preparation of his food so these are the uh, some important aspect of silk so uh, uh, as on now i am giving a rough idea about the silk diversity and uh, the silk uh, from silk uh, they are that production and potential of the silk uh, varieties and found in different uh, region and different uh, parts of the world and especially in northeastern region of India and Assam. So, these are the briefly about the diversity and the varieties of silk. So, now we can go for the according to our syllabus we have to study the, uh, the, the rearing performance and the rearing of silkworm and uh, they are food plants of silkworm. If we see the Muga food plant, uh, if we see the in case of Muga, so if we go for the Muga, then Muga that uh, if we go the systematic position, the systematic 
systematic position if we go the uh, go for the systematic position so phylum we all know that the, the phylum is uh, arthropoda then class class insecta then we have ordered that the lepidoptera lepidoptera then family we saturnidae 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 family so these are the systematic position of muga silkworm so before going to this uh, details uh, life history or rearing of the silkworm we have to know the systematic position because each and every species their life history and their feeding parameters we have to uh, discuss differently so yeah, i have mentioned already that the muga silkworm Antheria assamensis, Antheria assamensis, assamensis help her. There is systematic position. Then, if we see the before going to this, their uh, life history. So we have to briefly mention their food plants. So if we, I have already mentioned that food plants. So food plants, if we see the food plants. So, Muga silkworm food plants so far reported 15 numbers of food plants across the world. So, among the food plants, Parsia, you just mentioned, Parsia bombicina, bombicina, Parsia bombicina, popularly known as a sum. Sum plants are primary food plants and Another secondary food plants are they are Shualu, Shualu, Lichia, Lichia monopetella, monopetella, Lichia monopetella, secondary food plants. Then tertiary food plants, I have already mentioned that tertiary food plants. Tertiary food plants, Lichia, Lichia salicifolia, Lichia salicifolia, popularly known as Digloti, Digloti, and another important, another important secondary food plants, Lichia cubeba. Cubeba or Lichia citrata, citrata, popularly known as Mezangkori. So these are the these are the food plants of Muga silkworm. I am mentioning uh, this because before going to this uh, the life history or rearing, we have to know the food plants. So uh, these are the briefly about your according to your syllabus as sericulture. So sericulture, I, I have already mentioned that uh, non-malbury and malbury both uh, part I have just giving uh, uh, idea about the uh, sericulture and there are four varieties of silk also I have already mentioned that uh, uh, in the world four varieties of silk are uh, available and in India and northeastern region of India interesting is there. I am just reviewing what I have already uh, talking uh, and discussing. So, uh, that interesting is there are four varieties of silk and uh, available in northeastern of in, in uh, northeastern region of India. And interesting is there that Muga is a monopoly in Assam. It is a rare uh, northeastern of uh, region of India, especially Assam, and 99.9 percent .9 production from Assam only. So, uh, according to its levels, we have to discuss the life cycle, rearing, and food plants of Eri and Muga silkworm. So, now we are going to for the Eri silkworm. Uh, one by one, airy silkworm. So, airy silkworm, if we see the airy silkworms, I have already mentioned that uh, 19 species across the world, 19 species are there, and Semia ricini, which is commercially rare uh, species across the globe. So, scientific name Samia, Samia ricini, Samia ricini donovan, donovan. So, uh, if we see the, uh, because you, you know all that the, 
their systematic position systematic position we see systematic position uh, phylum from phylum phylum arthropoda arthropoda then the class class insecta insecta order order lepidoptera lepidoptera then family family saturnidae saturnidae and type which we are going to study that uh, some uh, ericilcum semi aricini number so uh, according to the slavers we have to discuss the, the life history or life cycle life history or life cycle of ericilcum so like other lepidopteran insect or a butterfly so eri silkworm life cycle also complete eggs larva pupa inside the cocoon cocoon and adult so four stages are there so uh, if we go for the eggs so in this uh, life cycle we have to discuss about their uh, that characteristics of eggs so uh, 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 color of the eggs then incubation period from uh, laying to hatching so that that period is incubation period again uh, we have in larva larva also we have five uh, larval stages there they are and four molt and five larval stages then pupa so inside the cocoon pupa then adult adult male female uh, there so we will be going the details about the, the their life cycle in their characteristics so i am just showing the, uh, the commonly available host plants of very silkworm that uh, uh, this is found in noga also that that's why i am giving the example so uh, that the castor which is popularly known as uh, aragos in assam is so ricinus communis then trephioca Simolualo uh, in Assamis, then the Maniha de Utilissima, then Kesero, we have Heteropenes fragrance, then Alenthas excels also uh, available in uh, Noga also. So, if we go for the details about the rearing, rearing of the Eri silicon, so right from the we have to start the, the Greenwich operation. So, uh, traditional and scientific uh, rearing we have to uh, mention. Uh, uh, in case of airy silicone rearing also. So, traditionally Greenwich practices are uh, like this. So, uh, so, villagers or farmers so what uh, they are doing, they are tied the cocoon uh, in a cloth and uh, hanging like this and so uh, that uh, moth will be emerged and after emergence uh, they will lay eggs uh, there. So, in, in case of scientific rearing or scientific practices of uh, Greenwich in case of airy silicone. So, traditionally Airy silk moth were allowed to lay eggs in cloths, but in this method, less number of eggs produced and diseased eggs cannot be eliminated. So, but if moths were tied in khorikas, like uh, yeah, khorikas means it is a device, egg laying device, stick made up of uh, thrust more numbers of eggs produced and disease eggs can be eliminated easily. So, this is the difference between scientific and uh, scientific rearing and traditional rearing. So, we have to mention uh, while we are going for description of this uh, that the rearing performance then you have to mention both the traditional and scientific rearing. So, accordingly this is the, the scientific uh, how we have to tie the uh, moth in khorikas just a demonstration and this is the eggs so after hatching so uh, generally the after hatching so that the young one young one young larvas will be given the tender leaves so accordingly in the tray then so, so uh, yeah, these are the different stages of uh, uh, larval stages so tray feeding and uh, tray feeding of airy silkworm and cleaning. So, how they airy silkworm feeds in the generally different two different methods are there after third instar larva and from third instar in some farmers from third instar larva they feed airy silkworm in bunch. They uh, they tie the uh, different uh, the food plants 
like a uh, castor or casero and branch uh, and accordingly they feed uh, the larva like this. So, these are the tray feeding and branch feeding. Uh, so, uh, here I am showing the branch feeding, how they are feeding and cleaning. So, uh, these are the field demonstration, I am just giving the example how in uh, airy silkworms reared in different villages and different farmers. So, I am just giving example. So, uh, cocooning of airy silkworm. So, uh, like the cocooning uh, for cocooning, uh, dry and hard leaves so farmers generally use dry and hard leaves are banana leaves and uh, mango leaves and uh, jackfruit leaves, uh, dry and semi-dry leaves for cocooning of the airy silkworm and these are the cocooning devices uh, and popularly known as Zali is in Assamese. So, post cocoon operation, so post cocoon operation like the, the, they are after the after uh, 5 to 6 days of the cocooning generally up to 8 days uh, so they are harvesting cocoon like this and after that uh, some farmers because it is open mouthed cocoon if uh, uh, pupa will be uh, pupa if pupa will be uh, extracted from the cocoon the, then also we can go for the uh, that is spin spinning of the airy seal. So, uh, they sell the airy pupa like this. So, these are the harvesting and grainage of the airy silkworm. So, accordingly the gumming process. So, how to uh, boiling the airy cocoons we know the uh, that the sodium bicarbonate and also that the soap also. So, boiling of airy cocoons with the soap and alkali. So, baking powder or soda. So, boiling of airy cocoons then washing of boil airy cocoons for further processes. So, uh, these are the preparation of cocoon cakes for degumming of airy cocoons and spinning of degum airy fiber. So, how to how we go for the uh, extraction of silk thread, airy silk thread. So, uh, these are the different, uh, I am just giving uh, uh, nowadays uh, different NGOs and uh, from our college also we are initiative uh, some uh, uh, program for to uh, promote agriculture as a mass and mass people. So, this uh, different uh, training and demonstration program also we have organized to uh, train up the farmers in rural farmers. So, these are the some snapshot uh, which uh, training is going on. So, just I am estimated, so economic benefit from a airy rearing. So, if we see the scenario, generally the we have, I have already mentioned that the, these are the multi -voltage. So, throughout the year, 5 to, yeah, 5 to 6 crops uh, can be easily reared in case of areas also. If we see the scenario and uh, one rarer, so, throw 6 crop from the 6 crop 90,420.5 rupees the per year they can uh, able to earn from the rearing or uh, culture of airy silkworm. So, uh, before ending this class I am just uh, sum up the what I have uh, discussed uh, in this class. So, uh, basically so we Today we are going to know that what is sericulture. So, uh, different commercial varieties of silk we have a mention and apart from this we have the present scenario diversity, uh, wide diversity of wild silk moth or silk moth species entire globe and northeastern region of India and I have mentioned that already mentioned that there is a northeastern region of India especially as some of potential for sericultural growth and development of sericultural activities. So, uh, why I am giving to according to a syllabus we have to discuss all these sort of things up to entrepreneurship development we have to discuss. So, uh, before uh, before concluding this class I am just sum up uh, this because just, uh, today we have uh, discussed uh, that the sericulture about the sericulture activities, the diversity of sericulture and, and lastly we have mentioned the rearing practices of uh, airy silkworm and 
rearing practices of ericilcom, life cycle of ericilcom and traditional and scientific way. So, uh, in uh, accordingly uh, like ERI also we have to discuss the MUGA uh, silcom life cycle and the rearing practices and their commercial products and uh, their diseases prevention and preventive measures also and we have to men we have to discuss also that the uh, their environmental condition of silicon rearing and spans and uh, span and reeling silk also so before uh, ending above i am just giving some uh, terms because this is a very uh, related in case of silicon so i have mentioned that the dfl so we have to know this dfl disease free layings after laying the eggs moth will be examined under microscope under microscope whether they are disease symptoms are there or not if it is not then we can say disease free laying so, another term we, I have mentioned denier. So, denier is a unit uh, to determine the fineness of the silk thread. So, accordingly I have mentioned that khorika. Khorika is a egg laying device. So, uh, another, another term also I have mentioned. I have mentioned here that uh, three it is a rearing device so bamboo made tray also there so bands feeding uh, so another one term also i have mentioned multi voltine multi voltine multi voltine so uni voltine voltine multi voltine uni voltine so before multi volt uh, go for the multi voltine or uni voltine we have to know the what is uh, voltin voltinism so voltin is if throughout the year particular insect or particular uh, particular insect complete their life cycle once uh, one time that it is known as uni voltine or if uh, more than one if it is two time then two uh, uh, bi voltine if it is uh, three complete their life cycle throughout the life three then tri voltine and more than that it is multi voltine so these are the term uh, you have to uh, you have to know uh, before going to the all these uh, sericultural activities 